What is the coolest thing you've, you've seen printed? It's the world's first 3D printed jet engine that's going to go on a RC plane. It's going to be mounted on a RC plane. It's going to be flown. Uh, that's the other part. That's the nose cap. And um, it's these two parts go inside of the jet engine. And uh, those are going to be what uh, produces the thrust. Well, the, it's uh, called liquid metal jet uh, printing is the technology name. It's uh, not a very well-known metal technology. We were trying to make a high-efficiency microturbine, and uh, to do traditional manufacturing in that way, it would have ended up being a million-dollar-plus little tiny turbine. What we do is we take in um, a solid aluminum of some form, and we put it into a uh, ceramic crucible. It's a reservoir, and uh, around that sits four coil heaters. So we melt the solid aluminum, and we have a melt pool and we fire the melt pool in droplets of aluminum out of a 50 micron nozzle and so we do that about 1,000 times a second up to 10,000 times a second. We worked hard on making our, our own nozzle. We tried others out there and they were never just you know what we wanted so now we have a, a professional like aerospace companies making our barrels and tips uh, very very precise. Uh, we also use a synchro mesh cable system which replaces belts makes the machine a lot quieter, uh, it works smoother, and it's a steel belt, so it never, uh, it never stretches. Wow. It's uh, basically a steel, steel cable with a uh, helical wrapping around it um, that gives it, uh, gives, uh, lets it grab the pulley so it keeps the perfect pitch all the time. It won't, it won't slip out of position. But this is a tool that I wish when I was you know, a little kid in elementary school it, it was available. So I'm trying to make a product that uh, kids in, in today's generation will see this and just open up their minds to their creativity and imagination to create whatever they want. A carrier that carries 128 of them, spring launches them out and creates this cloud of, uh, of data collectors. So we have our, a line of professional filaments that we bring to the market, in addition to color changing filaments, which haven't been seen before. Now what's professional mean? So professional is interesting. Uh, the way to describe it is you can actually feel it for yourself. It's got added heft, it's, mu it's much more durable. You get smoother prints, unlike anything else that you usually would print with. Why smoother? Um, due to the fact that it's got a mixture of both iron and plastic embedded into the filament itself. Also, as a, as a result, a fun fact is that it's got metallic properties, so you can stick magnets to it, and it's much more durable than your average print. So what do you think it would be good for in terms of... Um... Honestly, replacing any filament, because uh, when you usually print on your printers, you get, you get plastic prints, but you can feel how low the quality is. They're lighter weight, it almost compares to a cheap product you might get from China, for example, whereas this is a solid, durable product. Uh, also, the professional filaments are really easy to paint, and you can use professional paints on these, which would usually, usually disintegrate um, your average plastics. So now there's this other weird stuff over here. Color chain? And this one changes from white to blue when it gets colder. As I pour the cold water into here, it should start turning blue almost instantly. So as you can see the lamp over here we have running. It's white right now. Students like us, they really can't afford to use an expensive printer, yeah. and we want to have our own. So that's why we came up with the Delta printer. So far, we have about 700 subscribers on our website uh, before Maker Fair, wow. and every day we're getting more and more. Working volume on this is this is this prototype right here is 10 inches uh, in diameter and 12 inches in height. And the other question is, what materials will you be capable of? So for now, we're using PLA just to keep things simple and keep the cost down. Uh, if you notice, there's no manual calibration here. Like most printers, you need to adjust screws. Uh, you just assemble it, and it prints. We invented a new kind of rocket engine that's a little bit safer and still has good performance. We started doing the numbers, and we realized that the only way to manufacture it well is to do it with 3D printing. And so we started looking for a 3D printer that can print it, and we couldn't find one. So we decided that we were just going to build one. What do you call it? Let's call it 3D Monster. So then we're going to have um, a low temperature paste extruder. So you can do things like wax for molds, or you can do things like uh, clay for 
pottery, or you can do things like ceramics for um, high temperature parts, like, you know, rocket engines. You could see the inner uh, channel here, um, and you can see the cooling holes here, and you can see where the fuel would go in to cool the combustion chambers. We want to be able to print rocket engines on our machines. That's going to be our level of success.